mass layoffs are imminent. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, we have some new data that shows that mass layoffs are imminent as consumer demand and retail sales are outright plummeting. And this comes at a time when many economists and experts believe that we're going to see a mild recession, if not something worse, later this year. Meanwhile, policymakers are telling us that there's plenty of jobs, the labor market is strong, and it can absorb any downturn in the market. And I'm going to show you today, while it's too late for the labor market, as claims for job losses are about to surge. This over to Bloomberg, where we picked today's story up with the headline, U.S. retail sales decline for a second month on fuel and autos. And we've made the case in shows prior that the retail sales is, are going to come down. We said it's a function of demand from the economy and the wealth effect. But let's take a look at this report deeper because I want you to see how this is going to directly translate into lots of people losing their job across all sectors of the economy. The value of overall retail purchases dropped 1% after an upwardly revised 0.2% decrease in February. Excluding gasoline and autos, sales fell 0.3%, a smaller decline than forecast. But eight, get this, eight out of 13 retail categories fell last month, led by gasoline stations. So what's notable here is you're seeing this is a broad-based decline in sales and energy demand, which we know is key in re into the consumer price index. We're seeing demand for it fall as well, telling us that something is seriously wrong with the economy. It may not just be higher prices, but the end result will be a lot more layoffs. And we see general merchandise and electronics down as well. Vehicle sales declined a whopping 1.6% in March, and the value of gas sales at gasoline stations slid 5.5%, the most since April 2020. Keep in mind, that was when the economy was shut down. So you're seeing a big decline in demand from energy as we head into the holiday seasons, and we, then we head further into the summer. People are not traveling as much, they're not driving as much, and this is a big indicator that something in the economy is wrong. The data adds to the evidence that momentum is slowing in household spending and the broader economy as financial conditions tighten and inflation persists. And more of the issue should be, it's not that we're seeing inflation and tighter financial conditions. If we were told and we were promised the economy is robust, the economy is going to boom here. So it should not be an issue for consumers to afford higher prices or to deal with tighter financial conditions if indeed the economy was doing as well as policymakers want us to believe. And some Americans are starting to tighten their belt. Well, I will say some, I'm gonna say a whole lot, as start to tighten their belt to stay afloat as separate data this week from Bank of America, which we covered in yesterday's show, showed credit and debit usage decelerated last month to the weakest pace in two years as slower wage growth. There we go, that's the point. Fewer tax refunds and the end of pandemic era benefits weighed on spending. And so, so you see here, we shouldn't be having slower wage growth if indeed the economy was booming. And so that all portends back to the fact that if you have high consumer prices, lower income levels at the same rate, and then what you should see is indeed what we're seeing in the data right now, which is demand falling and retail sales falling. And eventually that leads to more unemployment. And that said, it can be difficult to draw concrete conclusions. Well, I don't know about that, but we're going to draw some just for some posterity here from the retail sales report as the data aren't adjusted for inflation and mostly only capture spending on goods. Of course, we talked about recently the ISM data from the services sector shows demand from services is declining and slowing. As a separate report on March household demand that includes price adjusted goods and services is due later this month. But here we're going to do, they said you can't quantify this. Well, we're about to in these next charts, and you're going to see just how bad this is going to be for the labor market at a time when most people need the job to keep up with inflation. And next thing you know, they're going to find out their employer is going to be handing them a pink slip. Let's start out with retail sales being a function, not only just of demand, but the wealth effect. Here we see the Wilshire 5000 in red against advanced retail sales, that shown on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And what do we know? Actually, they're both shown on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And you can see a decline in the stock market broadly leads a slowdown in retail sales. We can see here during the great global financial crisis, if we see the stock market turn negative, and that indeed led to a decline in contraction in spending. And now we see 
see a contraction in the market on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And with no surprise, retail sales have followed that down. But now let's take a look at this relative to the consumer price index, because when we talk about a robust economy, consumers usually can afford higher prices. But the moment those higher prices get to be a problem, because again, wages don't keep up with inflation, then what we should see is retail sales start to indicate a slowdown, and that should lead to a slowdown or even a contraction in consumer prices. And here we can see in red the consumer price index against advanced retail sales, both shown on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And you can see as the red line moves higher, as inflation rises, well, at some point, you get to this issue where consumers can't afford it because their wages aren't rising as fast. And you notice then the blue line decelerates. You can see here again, inflation rising, retail sales are rising up until you point, again, you hit an inflection point where, again, prices are too high and retail sales start to slow. You see that here again in the global financial crisis again it's all functions supply and demand if prices are too high and there's less demand will prices eventually start to slow down in terms of their growth or outright contract and here you again you see it you know from 2015 consumer price index you know we see inflation rising but retail sales are able to handle it until you get to the point where it can't and now we're at that point again inflation rising way too fast wages not even coming close to it we even saw hours work Worked recently are telling us that there's huge problems in demand and this is all translating back to the labor market. And now, of course, we can look at a second order effect, which is the, the CPI, but now the first order effect being gasoline prices, which we just saw that demand for that's falling. And that means lower gasoline prices, they're contracting on a year over year basis. And we've said that will lead retail sales lower. And you can see that here. And again, this is noisy compared to the CPI, but the same trend you see rising gas prices, and then you see eventually energy prices get too high and that eats into demand and retail sales in other aspects. We see that over and over. But for the labor market, and this is what's critical here, because we're already hearing from people that they can't keep up with inflation now. They're struggling to feed their family. They're struggling to do the things they need to do. And now it's about to get a whole lot worse. Because when you understand this, you know, as a business owner, if you have, you know, you're out selling products and all of a sudden demand starts to go down, well, there's things you can do. You can go through and you can cut some expenses, trim some things, but you can't get your rent to decrease. You can't go to your landlords, hey, you know what, business is slowed. Can, would you cut my rent? You can't get rid of some of your, your insurance costs and your other you know, utility costs. There's costs that you can't get rid of, but there's one you can, and that's some employees, particularly the ones you may not need anymore. And that's what this chart validates right here. You can see advanced retail sales in blue against the four-week moving average of initial claims. And they look nearly like mirrors of each other because for the most part, excluding what was going on here post-pandemic, they are largely are mirrors of each other. As retail sales, as you see in blue, slows down, you notice there's an uptick in initial claims because retailers, wholesalers, they don't need as many people because there isn't demand. And you see that relationship over and over. And here you can see this long slowdown in retail sales we're starting to pick up an increase in initial claims and what I'm suggesting is that number should continue to go higher and we've got some other data as we look at import and export prices we've got data coming out of China and we even have some more US data to look at and here we can see the export price index for in out of the U.S. down 0.3% in imports coming into the U.S. down minus 0.6%. So we're seeing deflation here as a sign of demand. Remember, we talked about in the show the other day, think of the CPI as a supply and demand. If you're seeing slowing consumer prices, in this case, you're seeing a negative import prices. That's telling you demand is down. And sure enough, what do we note? Advanced retail sales against the import price index. And of course, great great relationship here as retail sales start to slow down and as you see in the red line what happens you it's not unusual you get a peak in import prices and then they come crashing down you see that happen every time and now they're falling because there is a lack of demand here and of course this also comes back to the consumer price index where we can see import prices remember you know the cpi is really a function of two major things gasoline prices or energy prices and import prices particularly coming out of china but if we just look at import prices into the world's largest consuming nation what we should see is if you see those two components gasoline 
and import prices contracting on a year-over-year -year basis, that means headline CPI is coming down in a big way. And sure enough, what do we see? Import prices generally, not always, but generally lead a decline in the consumer price index. You'll notice here in the great financial crisis, that was because energy collapsed here. But broadly speaking, we tend to see, of course, as we see now, goods inflation heading lower, causing major problems. And then coming out of China this week, these are data from China. Now, we don't care about China's CPI, although it is notable that it went negative month over month. But the producer prices, those feed back into U.S. consumer prices. Now, they're negative, minus 2.5% year over year. And here you can see this chart of the producer price index total for China of the People's Republic of in blue against the U.S. consumer price index in red. And sure enough, what do you see? Generally speaking, the blue line leads the red line. And here we can see producer prices out of China in contraction, heading lower, suggesting to us that U.S. CPI is coming down and is all a demand function because here we can see out of the rest of the data today, U.S. factory production declines, get this, on weaker equipment demand. And of course, now we're going to start to see a lot of these headlines, weaker demand, weaker demand, weaker demand, because the consumer, as we've talked about, their wages are not keeping up with inflation. It has to backfeed into the broad economy in one way or another. And the easiest way to see it is through demand. And here we have manufacturing output fell by 0.5% in March, a drop driven by a pullback in durable goods. We'll look at that here in a moment. Its factory output is now down 1.1% from a year ago, and the outlook for manufacturing is cloudy. At least the ISM saying it's even maybe getting a little more cloudy than that, as higher borrowing costs put risk of ending capital spending plans and thwarting consumer spending on big ticket items. How about it's not higher interest rates? How about the real issue is wages aren't keeping up with inflation? But what do you think? Is it a wage issue? Is it an interest rate issue? Is it both? I'll let you weigh in the comments. Let's continue on. As the Fed's report showed capacity utilization, a great proxy for inflation decreased to 78.1%, showing less demand in factory. But get this, utility output jumped 8.4% for sent a return to a more seasonal weather, boosted demand for heating, which is what was driving some of these manufacturing and industrial production numbers up. And here we can just take a quick look at the producer price index, something we didn't talk about this week, but we wanna note that producer prices in the US are coming down, and it's largely a function of West Texas Intermediate crude oil prices, which lead producer prices here in the US. But as far as the overall industrial production, and we'll make the case why more layoffs are coming on the next slide but i want you to see that as new orders and we've talked about how critical new order growth is as new orders in red decline well what should follow per decline in manufacturing production we continue to see a decline in new orders we noted that the ism mentioned there's a further decline in new orders we're seeing it in the fed regional surveys it's all there and how does that again translate to the unemployment claims well we already saw the initial data of retail sales but now let's look at it from a manufacturing perspective and here we have industrial production with the four-week moving average initial claims again looks like the mirror of that chart that we saw with uh, retail sales and for good reason because if retail sales go down then production goes down new orders go down and layoffs go up and here you can see that the likelihood now that we're going to see a rise and initial claims and mass layoffs coming in the next several months is going to be huge at a time when policymakers still think they need to raise interest rates to contain inflation. And based on this data, inflation is going to be the least of their problem as a ton of people on the unemployment line. Well, they're going to have less money to consume, and that's going to be prices way down. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.